The Witcher Trilogy, truly and honestly a phenomenal series unlike any other, but it's those defining moments which stick with us as a player till the end. So without further ado, let's get to the top 25 Witcher Trilogy moments. We begin this chart with one of the more interesting conflicts of The Witcher 1. An evil beast has appeared, torments due to the evil deeds committed by the villagers and the witch. So unravelling this mystery and deciding on the lesser evil as well as dealing with the beast puts this at number 25. I'll slay every lice-ridden peasant, anything that moves and can't climb a tree. On the Skelliger Isles of The Witcher 3, a Jarl is cursed by a Heim. Though if you place your faith and trust in Ceres, you come up with a plan to outsmart the Heim. This proved to be a potentially dark yet rewarding tale at number 24. In The Witcher 2 at Vergen, you come across a man named Elfon who tasks you with collecting harpy feathers, though when you've collected enough, his intentions become apparent. It's hilarious, placing this at 23. Pretty warm for this time of year. It is colder usually, isn't it? <laughs> In The Witcher 2 at Flotsam, a lot of key events take place at the Elven Ruins. A confrontation with some bandits whilst trying to find the Rose of Remembrance with Triss, leading to some sexy times. A built-up confrontation between Yorvith and Roach and an epic battle with Lefo really makes the Elven Ruins a place to remember at 22. A Witcher and a few Elves are enough to kill a king? In The Witcher 3 with Geralt's memory finally restored, he reunites with Yennefer and whilst on the Skelliger Isles they're able to slip away for some sexy times. Though this is a very unusual circumstance involving a unicorn, proving to be rather entertaining at 21. And let go of the mane. I know you. I let go. You throw us off. <laughs> In The Witcher 1 at the Salamandra base, a heated battle with the Professor takes place. Unexpectedly, falling through the floor, the Professor's life comes to an end at the hands of a Kikimura Queen at number 20. <laughs> In the Hearts of Stone DLC of The Witcher 3, Odin is finally cashing in on Olgird's soul. Though Geralt wages his own soul to save Olgird in an impossible challenge. Overcoming and outsmarting the Master of Mirrors, saving Olgird's life, places this at 19. I'll never forget what you did for me, Witcher. In The Witcher 2, whilst leading King Foltest to safety, Geralt takes his eye off the ball for mere seconds. The assassin of kings strikes. King Foltest's death takes number 18. In The Witcher 2, due to actions made by King Hensol, a mist curse sits between two factions in Vergen. After finding the required items, Geralt enters the mist, reliving the experience of fallen soldiers during the battle and taking down the almighty Draug. Lifting this curse was truly unique, earning number 17. I sentence you to death. You shall burn the stake. In the Hearts of Stone DLC of The Witcher 3, Geralt is to show Olgird's fallen brother the time of his life and to do so lets him possess his body at a wedding with Shani. Seeing Geralt through the eyes of Vladimir, he's cheeky, witty and devilishly funny, really providing an entertaining and unique quest like no other, easily earning number 16. Whoever caught the garland shall be next to wed! Here we have a joint entry. In The Witcher 1, after slaying Dagon and fulfilling the Lady of the Lake's wishes, you are knighted and awarded with Arendite, though with unforeseen circumstances, the sword is misplaced. Which brings us to the Blood and Wine DLC of The Witcher 3, where Geralt proves himself yet again. The Lady of the Lake re-emerges and returns to you, Arendite, at number 15. Now bear it. And I trust this time you shall not lose it. In The Witcher 2, after lifting the curse, King Hensol and his men attack. With everything going on around you, fighting waves of men really proved a challenging and exciting battle, as well as getting to see Saskia's true dragon form puts this at 14. The battle is over, King. You won, 
And the victors state their tongue. In The Witcher 3, after returning to Kaer Morhen, Lambert, Eskel and Geralt have some downtime. After a few drinks together, things really start to escalate. This was written exceptionally well and was pure comedy gold at number 13. I trust you have an explanation for this. A very good one. Go to bed. Now. In The Witcher 1, with the aid of Triss, Geralt is able to enter the old manor, take on waves of monsters and vast hordes of mutated knights of the order, and claim his revenge upon Azar Javid and eradicate the Salamandra once and for all at number 12. Javed's dead. Expect to see me, Grandmaster. Soon. In The Witcher 3 of the Blood and Wine DLC, we enter the land of a thousand fables, where we seek three magical beings to free Sienna and escape. This dark and twisted take on renowned fairy tales was unique, unexpected and thoroughly entertaining at number 11. You stepped on Zambolina! That was my favourite tale! Why is that? Because it wasn't about a princess. Here we have a joint entry. Philippa Eilhart is no angel by any means, but King Radovid is borderline insane. In The Witcher 2, he takes things too far by permanently removing Philippa's sight, but she is able to escape. Later, in The Witcher 3, Geralt is part of a scheme to end King Radovid, though Philippa has been plotting away, and her revenge takes number 10. Forgive me. I could not deny myself the pleasure. In The Witcher 1, Princess Adda is cursed by the Strigger yet again, as Geralt finds himself locked in the crypt with the beast. A truly epic battle awaits unless you decide to do the noble and Witcher thing by trying to free Princess Adda and lifting the curse so she is free from the Strigger once more at number 9. Geralt... Do you feel alright? Yes. Better. In The Witcher 2 of the early stages of the game and with the assistance of the sorceress Sheila, you finally come face to face with the Cairn. This is truly a beast of gigantic proportions and exactly what The Witcher is all about. This was an exciting and challenging battle from start to finish, placing it at number 8. I've heard you've been in more dire situations. I wonder, are the stories about you true? In The Witcher 3, everyone gathers at Kaer Morhen to protect Ciri from the Wild Hunt. This had been built up throughout the entire story, recruiting friends and allies to aid in the battle and the battle preparations made beforehand. And it delivered perfectly with everyone playing an important role, though Vesemir's sacrifice to save Ciri came out of nowhere and her outburst puts the battle of Kaer Morhen against the Wild Hunt at number 7. See someone you love die because of you, for you. We all knew what we were signing up for. Throughout the majority of The Witcher 3, you're searching for Ciri, following her trail yet always a step behind, so to finally find her on the Isle of Mist was such a powerful moment. The initial panic of Geralt fearing he was too late, yet for Ciri to grab hold was such a heartwarming moment at number 6. You've not changed a bit, any of you. Just like I remembered. What? Towards the end of The Witcher 3, to battle and systematically defeat the Wild Hunt in such awesome scenarios amongst an all out war was truly epic. To avenge Vesemir and now know that everyone can finally rest easy, as it's the end of such an awesome foe, puts this at number 5. At the end game of The Witcher 1, you reach the ice plains and start to ascend, tackling a variety of obstacles and monsters along the way to reach the peak to take down the Grand Master. This was a fantastic climax to the original Witcher to finally end the Grand Master and finish on such a memorable and iconic line puts this at number 4. That sword is for monsters. At the summit of the endgame of The Witcher 2, controlled by Philippa, Saskia in dragon form attacks. She decimates and surrounds everything in fire, leading to Geralt ascending the tower for an epic showdown, finishing off the dragon in spectacular fashion and by choosing to aid Saskia by removing her from Philippa's grip puts this at number 3.
depending on the choices made along the story of The Witcher 3, Ciri may choose to follow in her father's footsteps and pursue a role of becoming the future Empress. If she does indeed do so, when she reveals this to Geralt, this is a really powerful, emotional and hard moment to take in. This is recognised instantly on both the faces of Geralt and Ciri as after everything they've been through, this is truly an emotional moment as they know the only path going forward is to part ways at number 2. Our number one entry is the ultimate encounter in The Witcher 3 of the Blood and Wine DLC, The Higher Vampire, Detlaf. The majority of the DLC are trying to do good by Detlaf as he has been wronged, yet his rage consumes him leaving no choice but for Regis and Geralt to engage in battle. Throughout the entirety of this battle you really get to feel Detlaf's rage and witness firsthand how truly terrifying an elder vampire can be. Overall this encounter was extremely challenging and exciting throughout, watching Geralt and Regis working together through key set pieces to put the Elder Vampire down, making this our best moment from the Witcher trilogy. So that brings us to the end of our video, if you enjoyed please remember to like, share and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated and please stick with me because I will be bringing more videos to you soon. Take care now, Gavinci out.